Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well today. Hope you've been able to get out and have some fun with your cars, bikes, planes, trains, boats, whatever it might be, ATVs. Actually use them for what they were meant for, having fun. Today's subject is going to be a little hands-on and little classroom, if you will. Episode one, we're going to start with the classroom side of it. We're going to just talk about looking at things in dyno sheets and being able to do diag uh, easy first steps and well i don't want to say rule number one is this or rule number two is that we're going to cover some basics bullet point stuff that that will help you diag when things are going wrong on the street on the dyno on the racetrack and we can start with stuff like what we see in this picture this was a coil swap on this particular car and this was some of the coil wiring that we had to fix and you can see that there was definitely an attempt made to do it right they have heat shrink solder connectors they're double joined instead of running new wire and they were short enough that it caused the pins to come out of the lock and we ended up having to cut it all apart and and do it uh, in a more professional manner to make sure that this car was going to work the way it was supposed to. So, bullet point one, make sure your wiring is good. Sometimes it's as simple as double checking all your grounds. Make sure they're tight. And if they're tight, look at them. Make sure they don't look broke. Make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to. Knowing what sensors are going to be 5 volt, what sensors are going to be 12 volt, what ones are resistant base, resistance based. You can do a lot with just a OBD2 scan tool or good data logging software, depending on what you're using, and diag uh, some of these initial problems. So let's open the dyno software and we're going to look at our first example of a dyno sheet that we know it should look something like the blue line, yet we have the red line. And when I make this a double graph, you can see the boost, you can see the air fuel, you know, fairly close, 21.5 to 23.6, but a tremendous difference in power, and obviously I couldn't make any pulls past 6,000. So, what was the cause? What were the symptoms? First symptom is extreme misfires. Pa 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 pa. Sounded like I was on the launch control. And obviously, I couldn't make a clean pull to save my life, um, which is why I aborted in in that thousand RPM stretch. Now you can see that the air fuel was lean, so that would be one of the first things to look at. So we'll go to a couple of dyno pulls later. Now I have it rich, but it still has breakup issues. Maybe not as bad from 5,000 to 5,500, but every bit as bad from there on. We make another pull, get some of the low end fueling a little bit flatter, fix a little bit of the top end. It's not improving. And by this point, it's gotten worse. Okay. So it had gauges. I knew that I had oil pressure. That wasn't really the situation. So what would be my first step? Now, if I was going to have a rule number one, rule number one is it's always spark plugs. Um, anytime you have, have misfires, that's the first thing to look at. Now, there are, multi, there are things that are going to act like bad spark plugs. You can have excessive back pressure. You can have uh, small inlets on turbos and create back pressure where maybe the turbine housing itself shouldn't be doing it, but you've created restrictions and choke points that created that back pressure. That will cause misfires. You can push a combo way past what makes it happy. Um, some of our older videos on volumetric efficiency changes and back pressure we kind of went over some of that where in just one or two pounds, the back pressure can be so bad that you cause misfires. But rule number one is spark plugs. 
So this particular car was a Subaru 2.5, had big cams. It just somehow slipped through the radar and we didn't pull the plugs when we did the, the pre-dyno and it was plugs. So you can see we're 21 pounds ish, 21 and a half. Let's fast forward and we'll find same boost, new spark plugs. So here we have very similar air fuel. We have very similar boost. In fact, the boost pretty much lays directly over at the point where the breakup was happening. The only thing that we have done is pull the plugs, inspect, and replaced with new ones that were properly gapped with feeler gauges. Things to look at on spark plugs that don't involve gap, uh, signs of corrosion, signs of rust. If you have a car that has a hood vent and inline engine, it's not uncommon to get water in your spark plug wells and that will create oxidization, corrosion, rust. That is a big problem. You could have standing water in your spark plug wells. You can have oil if your valve cover gaskets are torn. There are other things besides the spark plug. The actual porcelain can be cracked. If you have a car that has a distributor, i.e. any older Honda or most old V8s, when you look at it, if your wires are broke and crossed, they can make these same uh, type of problems. But if you look right there, it made 325 wheel, same boost, breaking up, once fixed, made 441. It picked up 116 horsepower just by fixing the spark plugs in the gap. Really easy combination to fix in this case. And the car went on to make some power. So I think 650 total by the time we got it all done. But spark plugs, rule number one, very, very easy to overlook, but almost always the cause of misfires. Um, some of those modifiers we went over. Another one that I didn't mention, but I am now, is heat range. If you have too hot a spark plug, it's not going to work. It's going to create issues. So make sure you have the right heat range for what you're doing. Um, I personally don't run non-projected plugs in most streetcars. I think it's unnecessary. Uh, typically, I will not go colder than a heat range 8. Um, you get cold, low-speed fouling becomes a problem. Uh, which can also cause this, fouled plugs, but you pull it out and it looks like you dipped it in black tar, then you know, yeah, it's probably time for plugs. Bad fuel quality, a few things, a few things that can do that, but usually it's spark plugs and learning how to look at a spark plug and identify the issue uh, will help deal with a lot of the diag problems you're going to have. Now, other things that we can run into that we're going to get into, boost leaks. Some of the, the things that we can uh, have happen there, really obvious. We'll, we'll look at that uh, in just a second. Uh, we're going to talk about cam timing. There's a few things that uh, can create issues that um, you might not always think about, but we're going we're gonna to talk about. Now in this one, the problem is a boost leak. And there were a couple ways that it was easy to identify. This is actually an R35 GTR with upgraded turbos. And the first thing you'll notice is that at 4,200 RPM, it only made seven pounds. So first bullet point is that we are below wastegate line for pretty much every GTR actuator provided. So boost control issue really identified itself quick. Um, looking at the wastegate duty cycle, it showed 90%. So two and two together, okay, some sort of a boost control problem. This particular car was using the mass airflow sensors, and because it had the air coming through the turbo but not making it into the engine, it added fuel. And so you can see the air fuel goes into the toilet at a 1046. Um, any mass airflow car, you're going to see that. They're going to go rich. And then help identify what the problem is. Um, this car got so rich towards the end that it wouldn't even make a pull pull. It stopped. And we got down into the tens where our wide band on the dyno stops. The car started breaking up. You can see how it noses over. It was really easy to identify the, the cause in this particular case. Now let's look at it 
when it was fixed and see the difference. Keep in mind, no changes, but here's the difference. It is likely that that looks far-fetched, but that was literally tight, tight, tightening, I'll spit out the word, one clamp that got overlooked on one throttle body. Fixing the one got us back to 22 PSI peak, uh, right there on the whip, 18.6, 18.7 almost, 599 foot-pounds instead of 249 foot-pounds, so 250% increase, 414 horse, or excuse me, 361 foot-pounds to 599. I was looking at the horsepower. So not quite double. Um, air fuel is mostly fixed. It is interesting how it swapped. Um, obviously, who had ever previously tuned this car they wanted it rich on spool. Okay, great. And then as you get to 4,500 and out, it was pretty standard. It would suddenly make a full pull. Right there, it's an 1178 air fuel and 20 pounds instead of 7.1. And instead of 255 horsepower, it is 576 horsepower. So a quick, easy example of diagging a boost leak, cause and effect, and you're not going to see that on a speed density car as far as the air fuel, but you definitely will see that in the power because the air is just simply not going into the motor. Um, you might see a voltage difference left to right even um, if you have dual sensors like a GTR. And while I wasn't looking at that, I only did two pulls because we were just doing some baseline stuff to figure out where we were. The 800 horse that the car was supposedly making only ended up being 670, so it became time to figure out some changes and, and go from there. But still, some Diag stuff that we had to do, easy problems that pop up on the dyno. Now the next one we're going to look at is cam and crank sensor problems and cam timing. We're going to kind of roll it all together because we, we had problems on the same car, so it will be easy to demonstrate. So let's switch to our cam timing problem. If that content is something that you like, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Definitely leave comments for positive, negative. Let, let me know where I can improve, what you guys want to see in the future. It just helps the channel and it helps get you the content that you want. If Possibly you have a friend or a community group that can benefit from content like this. Please consider sharing it with them. Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want to go. Lastly, if you want notified as new content is added, simply click on the bell icon and YouTube will do that for you. Thanks again, guys. Take care.